Thorsten Lutz, Thank aka Strobel Cop. <laughs> How are you, ma'am? Uh, sorry? How are you? Uh, okay. okay, a little bit nervous. A little bit nervous? Yeah. Yeah. It's not so bad. Now, you, I mean, you have, you re the last few years you've been living in Berlin, yeah. but uh, you've been, you're originally from Cologne. Yeah. How, how much of your life do you spend in Cologne? Um, uh, you mean how much uh, where I was living there? Yeah. Um, I was born in Cologne. Yes. Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm originally from Cologne and, um, yeah, for, 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 for 32 years. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and then I decided, <coughs> uh, then there was a time uh, to decide to, 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 to see another city mm. and um, to get um, um, yeah, new impressions and uh, stuff like this. And then I decided to move to Berlin. Tell us a bit about Cologne, though. I mean, Cologne as a city, I mean, you know, much has been said in terms of, of music over the last decade plus, you know, with the compact thing and yeah. so much more. There seems to be, I don't know, this, this is a bit of a mystique when it comes to Cologne about music. Tell us, tell us about the city. Um, yeah, the city is like, um, Cologne, is, um, Cologne is not a city, really. <laughs> it's, it's, it's more a village looking like a city. And um, it is uh, really, uh, everything is very close to each other. Um, there's, uh, in, there's a small center, and you have uh, record shops there. All the clubs are there, the pubs are there, the bars are there. People living there. and. Um, so and uh, so you have only short ways, mm -hmm. and um, you go. I don't know. You go down, um, go out of the street, and uh, for sure you meet uh, three, four, five people you know, and you met in the bar night before and say hello, and everything is really like so. Yeah. And um, this is um, very nice on the one hand. On the other hand, sometimes uh, it's break your nerves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it is, it's a little bit like uh, from a little bit too much. And but uh, I think this is one. Um, one of the good things for Cologne, of course, because uh, I think this was the reason, uh, because uh, a lot of um, labels and uh, especially in this kind of electronic art, house, techno, labels like Compact, Areal, Italic, uh, maybe Karaoke Kalk, and uh, all these labels um, yeah, could grow very, very good in this city, and um, because uh, there was a really good working together, and uh, so, so there is this, this feeling of camaraderie between yeah. you know not just not just what's happening with the techno guys, but yeah. For example, when I when I start the label in, in 1997, um, I don't know nothing about uh, carry on a label. I I, I, I only have a, um, a small amount of money and a bunch of uh, friends um, who who uh, start up to produce their music and. Well, and I was thinking about, okay, hmm, what can I do? And because I was DJing during this time, it was in 1997, and then I was thinking about, okay, what can I do next mm -hmm. with and, um, uh, and then producing, hmm, not really, and then I decided to do the label. And for example, Wolfgang Pogt, Mike Inc., uh, was helping me a lot during this time. He was supporting me, and I could ask him everything, because he was in the business for years, mm -hmm. and, uh, and he knew exactly what to do, and um, so it was... Uh, very easy for me uh, uh, to to uh, to find a way uh, um, and to do all these things and to start up the label. I mean, you you, you say at this point in 1997, uh, you know, up until then you were just a DJ. How long had you been DJing for? And, and tell us a bit about the you know the foundations of, of, of the music scene in Cologne, say in the in the 80s and when you first started to to play records. Well, uh, I was um, um, I don't know. I was starting playing records about 1989, and uh, during this time, I was uh, I was really more into guitar music, and uh, I was listening to stuff like I don't know, My Bloody Valentine, yeah. Prefect Sprout, a lot of English bands, and um, and but I was even uh, into hip hop um, because I think there was a really good time for hip hop in, in the early 90s and of 80s. And uh, when I was playing, I mean, I can't mix, and I was only playing one record to the other, and uh, um, yeah, and uh, um, after the, in 90, yeah, 1991, I become a raver, <laughs> because there was the first parties uh, startup in Cologne. Uh, there was a, a DJ team called um, Cosmic Orgasm. Which was uh, uh, members of us, uh, Triple R, who carry on the label Traum Trapez, actually, and, and Bleed, who is a writer now for, for a magazine in Berlin called Debug. Mm. 
And uh, they're doing these parties every weekend, and it was uh, most of the time in empty uh, factory halls and empty warehouses. Uh, it was a time in Cologne where you can find places like this. Uh, it was in squat houses, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, yeah, there was every weekend another party, and I was really addicted, and I was really uh, I was asking myself, what, what they doing there because during this time they uh, playing a mixture of uh, they start up for example with hip hop. The first track from uh, Bleed, for example, was uh, Paris. The Devil Made Me Do It, mm -hmm. and uh, and then they uh, was playing breakbeat, early breakbeat stuff, and then techno. And really, the techno during this time was very quick, very fast. <laughs> and when you take a look to their records, they they only have white labels, and uh, and uh, but they know exactly which record it was, and that I was really impressed. And yeah. so I was like, wow, this is this is nice, and and so I become more and more. Uh, addicted to this kind of electronic music. And uh, at the same time, um, Delirium, it was, it was a record shop. Um, formerly, this was the same guys who carry on the compact shop, but before, uh, the shop called uh, Delirium. And yeah, and uh, this was my second home. I go there every week, two, three times, and buying a lot of stuff. And, uh, and so I become more and more, uh, yeah, addicted to this kind of music. Mm. And the, the main thing you've had, this label that you talk about since but, Yeah, it? this is completely different to techno. This has nothing Com to do no, with exactly, techno. No, exactly, exactly. Um, but this is just to give people an idea. Or do you, do you have something early from the label that you'd like to play first, or maybe? Um, yeah, I mean, maybe this, it's, um, yeah, this is, this, is, this is a record from, from, from my label, Karo Kakak, uh, the record called Wunder. And um, this was the seven, uh, seventh uh, release. And uh, this was a turning point for the label because this was the um, which one, yeah, with the great success. This was suddenly because before we were doing more of this electronica mm. stuff, we were releasing it, and maybe we sold uh, 800 copies or something like this. And then we released this one, and everything was wow. exploiting mm. um, for, for us. You had a lot of support from like the Jazz and Over guys behind this. This I think they were big fans of this record. Uh, yeah, it could be. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, should should play this? Yeah, What's this maybe. track called? So tell us about this and who. What is the name of this yeah, artist? This is, um, yeah. First of all, I don't produce it. I only release it. So uh, this is um, this is a record from a guy called uh, um, Jörg Follett. He's uh, from Cologne, Easel, and uh, actually he's releasing uh, under the name uh, Wetzel Garland because uh, we got some uh, copyright problems because of the name. Oh. Because uh, the name of this project was Bunde, and um, but there is a, a crap guitar band <laughs> in Hamburg. Uh, <laughs> they have a copyright really on this name, uh, and because Bunde is uh, called Miracle, it is um, and uh, yeah, and so uh, we have to decide. Uh, uh, that uh, to to change or here to decide uh, to to, uh, to to get another name for his project. So now he's releasing another name, Wetzel Garland, and um, yeah, and this record is unbelievable. I mean, um, uh, we released it in 1998, and we 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 still selling it. It is uh, I, I I sold uh, in a year now maybe 600 or 700 copies, which is amazing, and especially especially to Japan. Uh, the Japan people are completely. Completely addicted. Sometimes we don't know what they're doing because we, we are always wondering why wow, they order. They order it again. They, they want 150 copies again, but this record is 10 years old. Wow. Ooh, and they oh, already find new people. Oh, sometimes we think maybe they eat the CDs. Or I don't know what they do with it. <laughs> and it's, just, it's really like so. Wow. And um, but uh, yeah. And I, I, I can say this, this, this one is uh, yeah the, the successful successful Story, record yeah. of, of the label till now. So, I mean, when the label first started, was it very much a, um, it was more for album projects or, sing or singles? What was the... No, in the beginning, it was we doing only this white sleeves. Mm -hmm. Everything was very cheap. And, and, and then we had these labels. And, and in the beginning, we, we, we take um, motifs of, um, which are connected with the, um, this, this cult, mm -hmm. with the park where we were living. But I, 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 I can't remember the story about this guy. <laughs> Why we take this guy on this label? I don't know. I, I forget it. It's a, it's a shame. I, I, I tried to find it in the internet and stuff because there was a kind of family tragedy, but not so not so bad, more funny. 
but um, anyway. He's forever um, mortalized on your, on your first release. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we start with Sleep, oh yeah, it's the first one. And um, I think the Wunder record was the first one which we, uh, where we using a complete full screen hardware. So again, what was the, uh, the name of the artist on that? Sorry? Again, the name of the artist and the name of that track? Uh, the, um, the name of the artist is, uh, in this case, Candice. And uh, uh, the name of the track is uh, Luna Corona, I think. We well, had a DVD as well, didn't you? Ah, maybe we can, if you want, we can take a look at yeah. the video. Um, this is uh, uh, an old one. It is from, from a band called Donna Regina. They released on Karaoke Kalk since 1990. And um, yeah, it's more pop influenced music. It's even a couple. Ah. So tell us a bit about Donna and Regina. It's uh, two people? Yeah, uh, they are married, a couple. Yeah. Uh, Günther and Regina Jansen, even they are um, living in Cologne. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, yeah, they're doing music, uh, producing music for years, years. And they were, before they, um, come to Karaoke Kites, they were releasing on a label called Strange Ways, and they already uh, released four, four records before they uh, released their first record on Karaoke Kite. And yeah, they are one of um, uh, the artists uh, I'm working since from the beginning, maybe. Are they exclusively with your label, or? Yes. yes they are? Yeah, they, uh, until now they released uh, one. Yeah, there was a fourth album released um, November last mm. year. Do you have much of a say in, uh, say for example, you know, you talk to Donna and Regina and they're going to do a new album for you. They give you an album and you love it, but maybe there's two or three tracks that you're a bit like, Meh. Do you ever step in or you let the artists have complete creative control over um, the, the, um, the artists have the complete creative control. It is sometimes, not really often, that, 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 um, that I... Uh, um, that I decided to say, okay, please think about maybe we can take this track away or can we choose this um, or uh, can we change it with another one. Mm -hmm. But it's not very often. It is, I mean, Donna Regina, for example, or even Wexler Garland, uh, um, I, I have a lot of respect for, for them because yeah. they are very well, good, very well producer. And um, normally I accepted it directly when, when they give me their idea of an album. Um, I agree most of the time, 100%. It is something else when I when I working together with newcomer or so-called newcomer artists uh, who don't release an uh, album uh, before or they release their first album on Karaoke Kalt. Then I try to to get more influence on it. So I try to um, um, uh, to ask them if they have more tracks available. Blah blah. Oh, do you, do you the microphone. Roman. Roman is, uh, yeah, he's a Polish guy living in Cologne. Um, and he already released um, two albums on Kao Kakai. Yeah, there's a new one uh, since January, I think, this year. And Roman, um, yeah, he's completely, um, this is completely other, this is very fun because nobody understands why I released this record. Maybe. To get a best, better impression, we hear can, yeah, maybe we can yeah. hear a track because it is uh, um, some some people hate me because of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I I love it, and um, <laughs> hey, you are the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first track. So how how old is uh, Roman, and, and how long have you known him for? I know him um, uh, since uh, three years. And I get in contact with him. He come into my office and say, "Hello, I'm Roman, and this is my music." And and I was really into it. I, I really loved the music. And um, anyway, yeah. I can.